Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are listening, watching, whatever the heck you're doing, welcome to yet another episode of the Blue Jay Center Podcast brought to you by the Sick Podcast Network. I'm alongside of Rob Pantillamon and Buddy. We will get into all of it. The Rays, whatever the hell we saw today. You got a game we're going to play about the trade deadline. We'll get into it right now. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Blue Jays Center. Bautista drives it deep left field. Gone! The sickest Toronto Blue Jays podcast. It's going to be sick. All right, Rob. I mean, where do we need to start? Look, let's start with right away, bud. How you doing? Let's start with that. Get a positive thing going. Uh, not bad, man. Happy to be on this podcast with you, although we're still talking about the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays. So that kind of reduces uh, the level of excitement a little bit less. But nevertheless, uh, I'm doing good, man. How are you? Ah, we're hanging in there. You know, this was today's game was probably one of the first ones for me you where tried. after it went three nothing, I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Because of the gym and I could have fired on the TV, right? A little TV as I'm going. And I'm like, Nope, nope, not going to do it. Not going to do it because there's no need for it. And then I checked the score after like 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh, that's why I turned it off and didn't even bother watching it. Uh, yeah, pretty no, for, pathetic fortunately, stuff. I was at work. Fortunately, I was at work. And uh, usually when the Jays play when I'm at work, usually I'll have like my phone, try to sneak SN Plus yeah. in, try to catch a little bit of the game. Uh, this one, no need. You know, <laughs> no need, no excuse not to get all my work stuff done. So, uh, yeah, Jays are a disaster. 13 nothing against the Rays. Two hits. All of them in the first inning, one of them, uh, an infield single by Vlad. The other one, a double by Spencer Horowitz. And that was it. That, that's all they could muster against Taj Bradley. That's That was a disgusting performance. I feel awful for the people who took a day off work to go to this game today. I mean, that's rough. Pretty pathetic stuff. Now I'm going to get into a, a rant at some point. Before we go any further, if people haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button to the page, whether it's YouTube or wherever you're listening or watching to it. It would mean a lot to us. We really appreciate the love and support the last couple of shows. It's in a miserable time like this, watching this Blue Jays ball club to see the support does mean a lot to all of us. We appreciate that. Now, let's get into this, Rob, because I am pissed. Watching this team, we know it's not fun. Yesterday was fun, right? Game two of this three game set against Tampa was fun. You had Vladi going deep. You had some good moments. Yariel Rodriguez, a good start, a good standing ovation after. His- Great. But then today is a slap in the face with reality. And as I'm trying to process what the hell happened today, a few things came to mind. One, you've already mentioned it, that I feel awful for the people who, like you mentioned, took the time off, paid their hard-earned money to go watch that. And for God's sakes, it was a jam-packed 41,000 in there at Rogers Center this afternoon. And there were boos raining down, rightfully so. It is 13-0. Ernie Clement is pitching. And as you mentioned, Rob, they had two hits all game long, both in the first inning, one of which did not even leave the infield. And it's like, and they had to review it to even have him be safe. Like this is this right. is what was happening at this game today. They, they got no hit for eight straight innings to end the ball game. Like this is how bad this team is. And that leads me to this. It leads me to trade deadline stuff. We're not going to get into the, the, the preview yet, but it leads me to Ross Atkins and all the mumbo jumbo garbage that we continue to hear. Oh, we want to be in competitive in 2025. Where the hell is that coming from? Because I don't see it. The minor league system stinks. Your MLB club stinks. And oh, by the way, everyone's getting older. Springer's getting another year older. God forbid you don't trade Bassett or Gosman. They're getting a year older. And you can see the age curve getting to Gosman already. And so what are you going to do? And this is with your team now. God forbid you trade Jimmy Garcia, which if you don't, it's a failure. Like I mentioned in my to. personal video. It might get to a point with Jordan Romano not not God, I don't know if he's gonna, I don't even know if he's going to play the rest of the season. Yeah, it might get to a point this year 
where we're going to see Hennessy's Cabrera as the closer and Eric Swanson as the setup guy. Like, that's what we might get to at this point. And how, as a damn organization, can you look this fan base in the eye and tell them, we're going to be competitive next year? We know you're a robot, Ross, but we're not stupid. Yeah. Well, that this is my, my, my basic opinion on this is that you mentioned you mentioned why competing in 2025 would seem to be an unrealistic expectation unless there's a strict plan in place to basically do a complete roster overhaul. Yeah. Now, at the same time, though, in terms of Ross Atkins, him selling a bill of bad goods, we know the deal with Ross Atkins. It's not that he necessarily believes that this team can be competitive in 2025. I don't think at least. But it's like he doesn't have a choice. It's like he doesn't have a choice to admit to his boss on his last life, cats have nine lives, Ross Atkins is on the ninth one, to admit that he's wrong, to admit that he was wrong about this build and that they have to start over and remodel the plan to contention again. If he says that, Ross Atkins is getting fired. So Ross Atkins selling that, oh, there, there's a path to 2025, that's that, that's just to save his job. You know, I, I don't actually think that in good faith he believes that, which is why we've come to the point that we've talked all season long you have to take that decision out of Ross Atkins' hands. He cannot be the GM going further, and you have to make the right call. And the right call at this, to me at this point, I mean, we can talk about the more macro, what do you do with the bow and Vlad of it all? But at, at the same time, regardless, I, I don't think, like I said, and we're going to talk about the trade deadline shortly, I, I don't think trimming the fat, trading the expirings is, 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 is an option. To me, it's at least not a reasonable option. If you're actually trying to plan and contending in 2025, like we said at the tail end of last podcast, you got to find a way to restrict payroll, give yourself some flexibility, and actually make a serious move in free agency this offseason because you don't have the prospect capital to go out and make moves. We saw this past offseason. And obviously, you know, if you were to make some trades, maybe you can recover a little bit. But yeah, no, uh, the only way that this team is competitive in 2025 realistically is that there's a complete overhaul that's fixed between now, the trade deadline in, what, four or five days? and next opening day of next year throughout the whole offseason. Trading the expirings, to me, that, that gets you nowhere. That That's basically doing your homework at on the bus to class. You know, you're not really getting anything out of it. So, I mean, that's, that's a long-winded answer of getting into the preview of the trade deadline to segue. But, yeah, that's my take on on your little mini rant there. Well, it it's just – it's wild to me. And I'm, I'm assuming you listened to the, the, the most recent At The Letters pod. Not yet. Um, Not yet. I'm planning on listening to tomorrow. Tomorrow, well, I'll drive to work. I will read you a quote I from saw this. said podcast. I, think I saw this on Twitter. I think yes, I saw this on Twitter. Yeah. This is the pod. This is the quote from Arden Zwelling. Again, it's not anything concrete. It's no sources, but this is the quote from Arden Zwelling in the most recent at the Letters podcast. If I was a betting man today, I'd bet on Ross Atkins remaining the GM of the Blue Jays in 2025. What are we doing here? Like, we're slapping our head against the wall and continuing to do so. Or, you're, as you mentioned, the the the, the trading uh, expiring contract, slapping a bandit on a bullet, bullet hole. You know, that sort yeah. of thing. And my question is this. I wouldn't say it's a question, more a statement. The Dr. Phil saying that everyone freaking knows, is it working for you? And if it ain't, change it. And if it is, hey. Keep going. Well, hey, Ross, nub nuts. Hasn't worked, <laughs> bud. You haven't won a playoff game in almost 10 years. You're not going to miss the playoffs by a, a long shot. You're out by the trade deadline. Your team stinks. You have no future. It hasn't worked. Why is he able to go into 2025 if it ends up happening? It makes no sense at all. Here's what I will say, though, and, and I will caveat. You know, I'm, I'm not one to defend Ross Atkins. I haven't been that all season long. But I will say, if you're going to give Ross Atkins the autonomy of giving him another year, at least you can say, hey, Ross, look, hey, this hasn't gone well, but hey, we're going to give you 2025. Now get this right. Don't be conservative. Don't just trim the fat, trade the expirings. Actually go in there and do what you have to do. Trade, you know, Kevin Gosman. Trade Bo Bichette in this offseason. Trade whoever you have to trade. If it's going to mean you overhauling this, you don't have to, you know, you, you, your, your job's not on the line right now. You still have a chance to make this work, but if this, the results are going to be yielded the same next year as they are now, then yeah, I'm sorry, but you're gone. So I, I feel like if there is, you know, a good thing to that is, you know, giving Ross Atkins the security of next year, if they did do that, well, then maybe that prevents him, you know, trying to be uber conservative this deadline. Cause like, to me, that's my worry. That's my worry is that if Ross Atkins knows he's getting fired, 
he's not going to completely overhaul the roster. He's not going to collect no. prospects for his, you know, his successor. The GM was coming in after him next year. So from that statement, I, I guess I, I do find a see the linear, linear thinking and it kind of makes sense, but I, I still feel like it's too late, man. I still feel like it's, you know, it's, it's past due. Ross Atkins, I mean, the fact that he even got this year, I think to many was surprising, but th- there's no way he should be getting another year, but we'll see. It absolutely is shocking that he even got this year. The the, the way yeah. the last season ended, one run in the right. playoff game, and we all saw that coming, right? We knew the offense was no good. You knew going the one guy who's going to retire, the the, yeah. the one guy who was drove in that run is. Just we'll touch on KK in a second here, but absolutely, like it's embarrassing. Kevin Kiermaier drove in your only run. You had one extra base hit the entire series, and it was Vladdy with a double that almost left the ballpark, but it didn't. And we all know the Jose Barrio situation, which John Schneider got blamed for it. And it was the whole walk it back. It was ugly. It was a complete ugly end of season press conference. We're all like, this guy's got to be gone now. The yeah. team is not winning. They're useless. And he's now not taking accountability. And he's still here. And, and that's the part to me that I just, I can't get my head around. But I will say this. And I learned this from listening. I mean, you, you you're the same. Listen to a crap load of podcasts, Blue Jays Talk, Jays Talk Plus, all this stuff. The MLB draft is flawed now in the sense that they don't want teams to tank. You look at teams like the Orioles and their old first overall pick after first overall pick, or Jackson Holiday, Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson was a top pick, all these big, big names. And people are like, you know what? If it means a little bit of pain, we're okay. Well, mm, it's a new That's thing now. Where if you get a top 10 pick next year, the following year, if you're in the box, you don't get the pick. Yeah, the Guardians this year. The Guardians this year, they weren't like, you know, bottom tier team last year. They were not a good team, but they weren't the worst team. Yeah, and they got the first pick. Right. So if you're a White Sox fan, you're just banging your head against the wall because, holy crap. That's awful timing. That's bad. But that decentifies. Sensitifies? Yeah. Sensitifies. Right? Yeah, something like Sensitizes. that. Oh, words are tough, I know. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, it decentifies tanking. And sure, you can do it for one year. But then you got to be competitive. And if you're not going to be competitive, well, you know, it's not what it used to be. So that's then, the weird not part. To mention that, not, to, not to mention, too, it's also like you, I, I feel like even if you were planning on tanking, I mean, how could you justify tanking with that kind of payroll that you're running? I mean, that, exactly. I, that just feels like awful. Yeah management you know i mean sums it up right off management that's what yeah. we're sitting here 10 games under 500 you lost 13 nothing in an afternoon game at home against the rays where you had two hits and ernie freaking clement was on the mound pitching he's their best pitcher today i had bassett was all right he was he was fine it wasn't great no he, he wasn't was great right. he was fine and then trevor richards oh my i mean God. He might be in the trade deadline stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to go too into, into depth about him. But his last two uh, outings, he's allowed like seven earned runs and got two outs. So l- l- let me just give you like a little bit of preview. Uh, I, I have a list. I have, I have a number, you know, okay. almost half the roster of Blue Jays players. I'm so, asking Pricey to assign a percentage that they're going to get traded. I removed Trevor Richards because at this okay, point, he, he it's a yeah. point for whether he gets DFA'd or not. Obviously, he's not going to get DFA because this pen no. just awful. They just need arms. But in terms of trade value, yeah, it's out the window. Like I, cool. I don't think anyone's giving you anything more than a lottery ticket at best for Trevor Richards. It's 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 absolutely fallen off a cliff, and it's it's remarkable how you look at his numbers prior to these last two games. Like they weren't bad. <laughs> they weren't bad at all. Like you look, I'm trying to find his uh, his game logs here. So he had an ERA of 362. You know, before his lower last before that, it was even lower before that. He's he's been rough uh, for a at one now. point. I, mean, well, I think okay. I think the whole yeah. whole month of July has been rough for him. I think when we were in Seattle, it was 306. Then yeah. he had, had that home run, a three run ball. Yeah. So holy, oh my god. Okay, I didn't know. It was, yeah, well, right. He has he had one scoreless appearance since the beginning of July. Uh, in that Seattle game where we were talking about, he allowed three runs in a, in one inning. Uh, then in San yeah. Francisco, he allowed two runs in two thirds. Been what of out of it? Parts of parts of four seasons now that we've had the Trevor Richards experience, and we know what it is. It's Jekyll and Hyde. It's can you go in there and strike out the side on eleven pitches, or are you going to give up a three run bomb? It, it feels like there's no in between with him. And well, like, I mean, uh, as the the fifth or sixth guy in your bullpen, you kind of live with it because of the swing and miss stuff. 
but as your setup guy, <laughs> that's tough. All of a sudden, it's a whole new composition. That's a whole yeah. new predicament you find yourself in. It's pretty bad. And watching, God forbid, Chad Green and um, Jimmy Garcia get dealt to the deadline, my hey, thought man, of that is the games might actually happen. Whether they win another game or not this season, that doesn't really matter. What matters is you get the optimal return. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm yeah, there. I'm there. There's no doubt. All right. Well, let's let's dive into this, Rob. Let's dive into this thing you got cool. going on here. I for people watching or listening, I have no idea what the list is. Uh, he hasn't told me a thing, so I have no clue which player he's firing at me. And I will just kind of quick fire off a percentage. My first thought. All right. So let's get this trade deadline preview underway. What do we got, Rob? So who's the first guy on so your list? A likelihood of getting traded from the Toronto Blue Jays within yes. the next what, like four days? Yeah. So let me just preface by saying, like, make it clear, it's not what you, what you would do if you were the GM. It's what you think is going to happen, yeah. like based on yeah. the current circumstances. So number one, we'll get an easy one out of the way. We'll do Yusei Kikuchi. What are the odds he gets traded? Well, percentage? so obviously there's a there's a chance he doesn't, which again right. would be shocking to no end. But I'm gonna give it like a 90, 95 percent chance. I would be. I was there. It, yeah, it, I said 95. Horrible. Horrible man. There's a little bit of room for error. Yeah. yeah. All right. Exactly. Cooking easy. So obviously that's another easy one. Uh, another guy that we talked, Jimmy Garcia. One oh, of the odds he gets traded. I mean, haven't heard much about it, but the fact that he's been back a couple outings now, and they'll probably get one, maybe two more outings out of him. Um, I'm gonna go 85 percent on Jimmy Garcia. Oh, wow. You're reading my mind. Like, that was exactly 85 percent. Oh. So we're, yeah, it, we're on par. We haven't heard much about Jimmy Garcia. All we've heard is, yeah, they should move him. And it's like, okay, well, at least with Yusei Kikuchi and the the extra. I don't know if it's an extra incentive for teams for Yusei Kikuchi. The reason they pushed him back that one start and to have him start Game One of this upcoming series is he that I believe. Really Exactly. So if he gets yeah. dealt on deadline day, I believe he can go in game one. Or if he has de a dealt on deadline day, he could technically pitch that next day for yeah, him. So that's kind you, of a you thing. Get that, you, get, you get that extra start, yeah. So, yeah. So so whatever that's worth, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 85 for Jimmy Garcia. Uh, as, as unfortunate, you know, this is the best Jimmy Garcia we've seen. And, of course, we're going to let him walk. And it's like, yeah, there goes that. Okay, fantastic. Hey. Hey, if, if you get something for him, all of a sudden. I mean, hey. you know, you, yeah, who knows? We'll yeah, see. And the I way mean, hey. The Jordan Hicks last year, I mean, obviously, like, Garcia, it's a little tough because he obviously got hurt. And, you know, he's yeah. still – I mean, who knows what the medicals are. To me, the medicals scared me a bit with Jimmy Garcia. I'm, I'm worried, that, like, the fact that he's only pitched once since he's come back, that we'll get traded and then some team will look – oh, twice, my bad. Yeah, yes. the one really good outing uh, and then the one last last game. Not Last night, yeah, not so good. Anyways, I think now we're going to see some – a little bit of divergence. Moving okay. on, Justin Turner. Oh, boy. Okay, well – I mean, he he should be dealt. Yes. Um, expiring contract, thirty nine year old. But who the hell is going to want him? Like that's another thing <laughs> that you got to have out there. I'm going to say it's good. I'm going to go seventy percent that he gets dealt. Wow, that's exactly what I had as well. Is that, we we did not do this. We did not do this before. We no, promised. I have no idea. Yes. This is great. Seventy percent. Yeah. We're Basically, dialed. my thought process was, and I actually have an interesting take with this. Uh, my whole point with trading Justin Turner, I made this take on this program a couple months ago, was to clear up roster space. Remember, we had the whole conversation, where is Spencer Horowitz going to play? Where is Arelvis going to play? And obviously, the Arelvis situation, we know what happened there. And you have Spencer Horowitz now basically proving us wrong and being you know, a capable full-time second baseman. That's completely changed the calculus and all things. So it's not as if Justin Turner is really clocking playing time from guys, but I still think that him being a veteran, I still think he'd have some value, even if it's a lottery ticket. He's he's gonna want to go to a good team. Uh, he's wonder, not retiring uh, yet, uh, we know, but yeah, it's, it's he's getting close. So maybe one last uh, hurrah, one last World Series push for him. Yeah, he didn't get any hits today, but I wonder if the six hits in the last two yes. games before this helped at all. <laughs> Add a little cool. extra, a little, little boost in the. Oh, we're gonna instead of your twentieth prospect, we'll get your eighteenth, bud. There you go. No, nah, it doesn't. Whatever work. helps. Anything Which counts. All right. All right. Wrapping up the uh, the expiring, Danny Jansen. Poof. Um, thirty five percent. Thirty five. Yep. Yep. I had it. I had it at around thirty. I, I was. Yeah. Like, I think I had I, it at thirty. I, yeah. I, I just say thirty five, just because it's it for one. Obviously, an expiring contract for a catcher. Yeah. Uh, that makes it that more difficult. He's got to go first off. He's got to go to a new team for the first time in his career, which. Yeah is very difficult in itself. 
Then he's got to learn a whole new pitching staff, which is very difficult mid-season. Also, his bat hasn't been great at all since exactly. like the beginning of June. So it's like, where's the incentive for a team to acquire him? And he's a free agent at the end of the year. So if a team brings him in, they're not going to sign him long term because of his health issues or the inability to stay healthy. So I'm going to go around 30, 35%. I just don't see yeah. him getting dealt. If anything, they might re-sign him. But I, I, I don't know. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I agree. And, and like you may be thinking, you may be asking, you know, Rob James, well, he's a free, he's a free agent. You're going to lose him for nothing. What's the point? And my, my answer to that is at that point, it's not necessarily about the value you'd get. I think it's because the value is so low. You'd be getting what, 25 cents on the dollar based on his value to the point where it's a precedent thing. Like you, you don't want to make a bad deal because you were forced to make a bad deal. It's like sending a message to all the other 29 teams. Hey, just because we're trapped in a corner doesn't mean we're going to overreact and just basically trade him for nothing, you know? So yeah. I, I do think that that perspective, I think that from that aspect, it, uh, it, it would make sense to hold on to him. I, I still said all season long that they should have found a way to extend him because you look at the catching depth in the minor leagues, not a whole lot there. You look at the catching market and free agency, not a whole lot there. We mentioned earlier the trade prospects aren't all that good. To, to me, uh, I think Danny Jansen's going to have a lot of leverage this offseason. I think he's going to get a, a, an oh. above uh, market value deal because he's just going to be the, the, the most sour, the desired fish in the pond. Which is but interesting. Anyway. His, like, his OPS is in the 400s for the, like the last two months. Yeah. And you've really yeah, never. Yeah, but I, I think I think the track record's there. The track record's yeah, there. Yeah, but a plus I, I don't know if I buy the track record a whole lot, Rob. I mean, I, honestly, I love DJ. We all do, but yeah. to see him do it consistently over a long period of time while being healthy—that's a big thing. Like I, you, a great example for that's me true. is like I like Devin Travis, right? Yeah. We we saw him in spurts. And he was awesome. And we're like, dude, just can't stay healthy. And then when he has a couple really healthy seasons, which didn't happen very often, um, it wasn't all that great. So, and I'm not saying that's what Danny Jansen is, but we haven't, like, this is the healthiest he's been in probably God knows how long. And his OPS is in the 600s. So I understand what the season totals and the career total, I get that stuff, but I like to see it over a healthy span you know, because then because that for me, I look at that, especially as a catcher. Right. How many times have we heard if Alejandro Kirk doesn't play every single day, his bat plays his you know, he, he swings a lot better. And we've seen it right when he doesn't play every single day. Kirk goes up to the plate and actually hits OK. Yep. And same with Danny Jansen. Right. If, if Kirk's not playing every day, Danny's got to catch every day. Most days, at least. That means he's going to be on his feet more. He's going to be tired more. Swing's going to be slower. And, and hence the OPS being down the drain. So. I don't know how this is going to work. It's going to be really, really interesting, regardless of trade deadline for Danny and free agency for Danny or re-signing or whatever ends up happening. It's going to be really interesting to see how his market kind of goes. Yeah. I still think Jays would be very wise to find a way to keep him. Because right now you're catching depth after cool. Danny is, uh, is Alejandro Kirk, Brian Servin, and not that much there. So nope. we'll see how that goes. That's a conversation for another time, though. Anyways, moving on, IKF. Hasn't played in a while. Obviously, he's missed a, a, approximately a month now. But we have heard some rumblings. I'm not sure how accurate these rumors are that some teams would be interested. And that would make sense because, one, this is probably his highest value that you're going to have at the course of his contract. And, two, he said he's having a very solid season for the Blue Jays. So we'll see. I also think that his skill set can be replaced. So, yeah, man, this would be a nice time to sell a stock at its highest value despite injury. What do you think? Yeah. I think there's no doubt, especially with how deep this Blue Jays team is when it comes to like right. middle like infielders, deep, yeah. right? Middle <laughs> infield depth. Yeah, it's all air quotes because the team's just not good. But you have a guy like Leo Jimenez who can play you. Spencer Horvitz yeah. has been playing second base now. So, you, you know, you have guys who, like if you're not going to be a very competitive team, then you, you Ernie Clement can play third and. Hell, Vladdy can go over to the third once in a while, and Horwitz can play first, and Schneider can play second. Like, you have these options, at least for right now. And as you mentioned, I mean, we've all seen it this year. ICAF's been, hell, it was their best si best signing of the offseason, um, which is nuts God. to even think Does about. You say that again. It's just, it's, oh, wow. It makes me cringe. I mean, to him, he, he's exceeded expectations, but him being the biggest, I mean, for you know what seems to be you know a pretty low floor Mid of utility guy, you know, no disrespect, yeah. had a solid career and a great season so far. But yeah, that's the, I mean, imagine telling anyone in December that he would be the highest, that he'd be the best acquisition. I mean, that would, I mean, they probably could have previewed what we're previewing right now a bad season, exactly. Yeah, so I, at a percentage wise, I'd probably go 
sixty percent. Okay. I think. Yeah. I think it, 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 it. They'd be stupid not to. For all the things we just laid out, the amount of depth yeah. you have at, at all the positions he plays, and the fact that you know, hey, he's he's figured something out. He's you know for other teams, right? He's figured something out. He's been well. It's not a rental. He'll season. be signed to next year on a good good value rental. deal. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Yeah. You know, he's not a rental guy, and it's a very good value deal for what he's giving at least the Blue Jays through the first you know half of the season or however long he played. So, I think they'd be smart to do that. You, yeah. you look at the career numbers and, you know, IKF's probably not going to do this for the rest of the season if he was to be a Blue Jay and beyond into next year. He probably won't be this guy. So you capitalize on when he's hot because, for God's sakes, how many times have we seen guys basically tank their value at the deadline? And meanwhile, IKF, even though he hasn't been healthy recently, was the opposite. So yes. train him out, train him out of the beach. Be smart. Yeah, absolutely. So I I'm at 60%. It's more or less because it makes sense, and that we've heard, like you said, the little bit of rumblings yes, about, about yeah. that. So I would agree. I guess yeah, for, for, for me, I, I'd plug it in around that range too. But in terms of like, if I was a GM, I would it would be hundred percent. I mean, you obviously you should trade a value, trade, trade a stock at its highest value, no yeah. doubt about that. All right, moving on. Chad Green's our next guy. Again, he's not expiring contract. He does have an option for next season too. So. That that could play a role in a team wanting him and maybe giving up more than you know the rental price, but at the same time, it could also impede the Blue Jays who want to be competitive next year and have him be a part of a bullpen that right now on paper looks paper thin. Yeah, Perhaps. I would. I mean, like, we, we, there's two different ways to look at this. One, would I make the trade? I mean, God, yes. In an yes, absolute absolutely. Heart trade trade relievers. You know me. You know me, Pricey. Trade oh, the reliever. Oh, yeah. Trade the reliever when you I can. I value at thirty, whatever he is. You know, it makes sense. Yeah. And the underlying numbers are kind of scary for Chad Green. I and mean, they look a little hectic. And so you look at the raw numbers and like, oh, that's really good. You capitalize on that now before it goes sideways. Yeah. Um, but if you're trading away Chad Yankees, Green. The Yankees were interested in him. I can't remember. Was it Morosi who reported that the, the no Yankees way. are interested in Chad Green in their union? If you move on from a Chad Green and Jimmy Garcia, you're not going to be competitive next year. I, I, there's just no way to do so. You're not going to build a whole bullpen in an offseason. It's just not yeah, going to yeah, I mean, I mean, You can just re-sign Jimmy Garcia, though. That's that's the thing. He's a free sure. agent. You don't have control. Yeah, sure. So can Danny Jansen. You trade him and then re-sign him. Make it all happen that way. But I don't What's the percentage? Chad Green. Percentage that is going to happen. I'm going to go a little bit lower just because I think they want to compete next year, even though I think it's a horrible idea. 45%. Okay, so so just uh, unlikely, marginally unlikely. Yeah, I think it's that's fair because we have no freaking clue what these guys are doing. But they would, if they were smart enough, they'd make a move like this. So uh, I'll I'll say sixty. I say it, I say it's likely. I I think like I said, I I, I want to say it's Morosi. I don't know for sure. I, I someone tweeted it. Someone with sources. Someone plugged in. So I, I think that this this smoke there. So I think the Jays should capitalize there. Now we get a little bit more murky. Now we're getting a little bit more. All right, okay. these are the kind of like housekeeping. You know, these trades that we talked about, they would be the sort like I mentioned, trimming the fat, preparing for 2025. Now you want to make a deep cut. We'll see. Yeah, Rob. Ahead, uh, ahead, yeah. All of the guys that we've talked about, Jays fans, are the ones that over the next four days you will hear, oh, this team has expressed interest in yes. said player. And it's like, okay, <laughs> enough of this. This guy is eyeing this. These are the final suitors for. <laughs> that's that's what you're going to be hearing yeah. over the next four days. Yeah. yeah, a lot of that is a leverage play. People got to oh. remember that a lot of that is a leverage play coming from agents, coming from front offices. They want to build a market, so you'll hear a lot of that. Be averse to it. That's all we got to say on this program. All right, moving on to the more fun ones. Chris Bassett, today's starter, oh. who so. we talked about having a very nice season. Although he is 36, I think I believe he's 36, right? Anyways, he's whatever. Uh, he's he's one more year left on his contract having a very nice season, and it could go either way, honestly. I, we talked about him potentially being moved, but, uh, yeah, well, what do you think? Uh, he is 35. Uh, 35. So next year, year would be his age 36 season. Yes, okay, exactly. got you. Um, I'm going to go low because I, I don't think they'll trade him. I think it's Me 20%. Too. I'm going to go really low. I I'm pretty confident on that. Um, for, 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 for a multitude of reasons, I mean, if you want to take him away, go for it. 
Uh, no, basically, uh, I was going to say that. Um, Chris Bassett, I feel like regardless of where your state is, I think the Jays should be in position to try to compete next year. They just have to do it the right way. Like basically just trimming the fat and running around the same payroll won't help. I'm saying that they should compete by completely overhauling the roster by cutting payroll. So that's, that's the reason to trade him. But I feel like even that, I think that Chris Bassett, you would need sort of a stabilizing 170, 180 innings guy to go out there and give you, give you length over the course of the season. And I still feel like if you really want to trade him, he, I don't think his value would diminish that much lower in the offseason than it is now. I mean, you would only have him for the one playoff run. But to me, I still think he's a 162-game pitcher, not a six-week pitcher in the postseason. I, I don't yeah. think he's a guy that's going to frontline a lot of postseason rotation. So I wouldn't expect a lot of contenders to be all that over-the-top interested in him. I do think he has value, but I think that I think the Jays should keep him. I think yeah. they should, and they will. That last point, uh, God, that what you just said just gave me Leafs nightmares. You can and you, oh God, the Kyle. Oh my bad, sorry. That was a Freudian slip on my part. (sighs) I know Shane's laughing in the background. I can just feel it as a Habs fan. Anyways, back to reality, which sucks. Um, Where the hell were? Oh yeah, great, Chris Bassett. That's where we're at. Um, Yeah, you mentioned it, uh, Rob. How. He's not a six-week pitcher. Like I, I, I just don't see Chris Bassett as a guy who's going to pitch a big playoff game, you know, for a team. He's going to be a great innings eater. He'll be healthy, like you said, 170 to 200 innings in that range. He'll probably do that for you. But the teams acquiring him, they don't need that, right? And you see what plays in the playoffs. So how many times have we seen it, right? Velocity out of the bullpen, lots of crazy movement on the off-speed stuff, and pitchers who throw or starters who throw gas and have nasty stuff. Now, now pitchers, and that's an air quote because Chris Bassett is technically a pitcher, right? I just don't see him as a playoff guy. So that's why I see them not really moving on from him um, yeah. and keeping around next year. I mean, he sounds miserable right now with this team. So <laughs> lovely. Yeah. All right. That was actually a perfect segue. Pitchers who throw gas and have swing and miss stuff. Well, moving on to Kevin Gosman. He's the next guy on this list. He's a guy that I've, I've said personally – I think the Jays should trade him. To me, that he is actually the the line of demarcation for this trade deadline for me. Whether or not he's on the roster or not will determine if the Jays did enough at the deadline. And to me, I think that's a guy who does have value, who is on, you know, he's what 34, he's declining. Yeah. He's a guy that you can get good value for. And he's a guy that would free up payroll that you can spend this offseason on remodeling the roster. He's a deep cut that I've been talking about. Uh, to me, that that would be the guy. That would be the guy that I would trade. Whether or not they will trade him, I still feel like they don't have the guts to do it. Honestly, I still feel like Ross Atkins is just going to cower it out and try to be competitive next year and play it safe. I say 35%. I'm still leaving out a bit of hope. I would do it, but I still think it's unlikely. What do you, what says you? Yeah, I'm in the same camp. I, I just I'm going to sit at 25, just a shade over Chris Bassett. I just don't see them doing it. Like we haven't heard much on the Kevin Gosman front. Um. We actually heard BNS say, didn't BNS come out with a report yesterday saying that they're not interested in trading Gosman? Now, again, again, that might just be a leverage play. That might just be a a message to all the teams saying, hey, unless you give us a serious hardcore offer, we're not going to do it. I mean, we heard these conversations about Jose Barrios when he was a Minnesota twin before he became a Blue Jay. I heard these exact same ones. So for any of of you people who saw that, I mean, that could be true. It could very well be true. But uh, I, I wouldn't take it all that necessarily to heart. Necessarily. No, like, no, 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 absolutely not. Uh, until I see pen to paper or yeah. physical transaction, don't believe or, the or, non- or Morosi tweet that Otani's on the plane. Uh, nightmare, absolute <laughs> nightmare fuel. Because now we're watching show hit 470 foot bombs. The last time we were happy as Jays fans, and it was for an hour, if that. Yeah, it was, I don't even think it was an hour. Because it gives Nightingale right, to shot that thing down quick. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, God. All right. Uh, Where the hell was he? Kevin oh, Gosman. No, you're, you're, I didn't even give him. Yeah, I didn't even really 25%. Get a, yeah, I said 25%. 25% yeah. I just I, – I gave it a shade higher just because he's got the playoff experience as well. Um, other than the Grand Slam that Tim Mesa allowed um, in Se- against Seattle – and for some reason, the bugaboo, his bugaboo, the Minnesota Twins, uh, he's been fine in the yep. postseason. And he's a guy who can fill that 
maybe think like third starter in your rotation, which again you'd need in a DS or something like that, or maybe even a wild card series for that matter. Oh, you he, need he, a guy like that. He would he he would he would start in a lot for a lot of postseason teams, even with the season that he's had, which has not been as great. I, I still feel like some team would bet on him. I, I think I think if the Jays wanted to, they can get good value for him still. They absolutely could. And that's why I think it's again, like we've talked about at nauseum during these freaking trade things. They could, but will they? And for Gosman, I don't think they will just because they're stubborn as all hell, but I think they should. I think it's the time to get off the, the get off Gosman's back. You, we've all seen the diminished stuff, the diminished numbers, baseball savants like, oh, oh, red flag. And it's like, yep, okay, let's hop ship. Let's get the hell out of here. But does the management team think so as well? And that's something we're going to find out in the next four days. So I agree. We're going to have the last two. I'm sure you can probably guess where we're going with this. I wonder who these are. All right, good. <laughs> the last two. Uh, we'll, we'll answer them respectively because I want, I have an interesting take. I want you to know. So, obviously, the last two. Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., what are their percentages of getting traded respect, respectively? If you listen to our last podcast, you had a sneak preview on what we think about Bo Bichette. But let's, uh, let's reiterate it again. What do you think, Bichette and Vlad? Well, as if any basketball fans are out there, and specifically Raptor fans are out there, uh, and we all know the Sam Mitchell clip, zero, 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 zero. They're not getting moved. Like, I'm going to stand on that till, till the cows come home. That's not happening. In the next four days, Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. are going to be For different reasons. One, for multiple for reasons. reasons yeah. One, Bo is hurt. So why the hell? Like, you are literally trading at the, at the worst possible yes. time hurt and having an awful year like what are we doing and vladimir guerrero jr i think they'd be absolute nut jobs to let this guy not only get like trade him away uh but to let him walk next year you need to put butts in the seats somehow yes. so zero percent for me yep i'm with you there too uh my interesting take was uh, i think that if there was a percentage and i don't think it's zero i, I do think that any ending is possible. I think zero is way too uh, on on one side of the poll for me. I, I would I would actually say I, I wouldn't be shocked if Vlad had a higher percentage than Bo because I still feel like at this point you're not getting anything for Bo, and I, I, not that you wouldn't get anything, but I think that you'd be trading at its lowest value. It would be a bad business decision that no one should, no one would do. Whereas with Vlad, there is still the possibility that Seattle calls up and says, "Hey, I'm offering you an Emerson Hancock and three top 100 prospects," and oh, yeah, all of a sudden hey, you're sitting there. Hey, we, we, we saw Emerson um, a pitch against the J Yeah, how do he look, bud? Yeah. Oh, hey, that's Rob. the cornerstone to the Vladdy deal. Against, uh, against that, against that Blue Jays lineup. Yeah, teed yeah. off on him. I mean, actually, I don't think they did actually, Anyways. but regardless, that, they beat. That, that's just an example. But yeah, I, I yeah, the, 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 we're not going to be clickbaity. We're not that kind of show. We're they're not getting traded. We'll tell you right now. Anyways, pricey. Uh, we, we have to wrap it up very shortly, but I can get a stat genius segment out before yeah, uh, on our way out. Rob's dialed today. Let's get that thing going. We got it. All right. So that genius segment, it's on Vlad, which, by the way, right now is the reason to watch this team play, to watch what <laughs> Vlad's been doing. It's been special, man. The, season, the, the last month that he's had has been awesome, although this sad genius would suggest that Vlad's actually been awesome for a little bit longer than just a month. He's been really good for a while now. Now, Pricey, let me throw out this date to you, April 26th. Now, why am I throwing out this date? Multiple reasons. One, it also happens to be the date that Vlad made his big league debut back in 2019. So, a day special and dear to his heart and the heart of many Blue Jays fans. But also, on a not-so-positive note, April 26th was the day that Vlad kind of stumbled last year. You remember all our talk about Vlad last season, about how disappointing of a year it was. It actually started out pretty okay. He had an OPS well over 900, and the exact date, April 26th, is when things started going downhill. I remember you and I were actually doing a post-game show that day. The Jays were playing the White Sox, and we still oh. talked about how great of a start Vlad was having to the season, and then obviously it all kind of went down the tube a bit. Now, obviously, we know that he was injured. That played a role. However, flipping the clock to 2024, moving back, moving or moving forward, I should say, mm. April 26th, since April 26th, it's three months, basically three months tomorrow. Coming to today's game, 74 games, Vlad is hitting 323, 15 bombs, and a 918 OPS. Man. So basically, Vlad's been incredible. He's been elite for three months now, doing the reverse of last year, of a mediocre start and a great rest of the season. Hopefully that continues for the next two months. 
But yeah, Vlad's been awesome. He's, uh, we mentioned, 15 home runs in that pace. That's about a half a season's worth of pace. So that's over 30 extrapolated to a full year. It's been a really awesome season for Vlad. It's been a real resurgence. And really at this point, like I said, the, the real reason why you want to watch these games and seeing how good of a season he's had. And he's been red hot lately. So let's hope for everyone's sake, for Vlad's sake, he wants to get paid. He wants to get those big bucks. That this continues for the next two months. The Blue Jays reward him with a nice bag. That would be chef's kiss. No, oh, would it ever be? Now, I went back to look at April 26th of this year and trying to see, oh, what was going on there? Uh, well, I was I was looking, honestly, because the date sounded very familiar, and I'm like, oh, God, is that oh, the no, date? It wasn't, it was, no, uh, is that the Aaron KC that downward spiraled the season? That we were there for. We were yeah, there what, for. What it was, though, is uh, Shohei Otani's return to Toronto. <laughs> where he went deep in his first at bat that was april 26th of this year so bottom line april 26th has have been wild for the toronto blue jays uh over the last few seasons. that's weird yeah and vladimir guerrero jr it's weird man like he has had three different seasons yes. this year he had the first what month or two or i guess month if you're you know you went back to april 26th um so he wasn't great for the first month. We're all kind of just waiting around. Him and Bo were not doing great. And we're like, okay, let's come on. Let's get this thing going. And then he turned into Luis Arise 2.0, where it was singles galore left and right. And we're like, okay, this is great. The batting average is coming up. But uh, where's the power? He's pop. And now he's turned into freaking Aaron Judge. Where he has 2021, five Vlad. 2021 Vlad. Basically, yeah. he's been. Five yeah. homers in his last seven, day, seven games. Yeah. And uh, like you mentioned, the only reason to watch this team right now. And that's it. Yep. So love Vlad. Want him to stay around because for the love of God, if I'm going to watch a game, I want to turn on his at-bats. That's it though right now. So Absolutely. I can't watch a White Sox team where there's literally nobody that you care about. I'd rather not. All right. Well, Rob, last segment before we wrap this puppy up. We'll, we'll quickly do it because for the love of God, what does it really matter? Uh, you got the Texas Rangers in town. The final... Uh, final final full series before the uh, trade deadline. Obviously, the doubleheader against the Orioles the day before, which is weird. Yep. But uh, yeah, Yusei Kikuchi gets the start tomorrow in the uh, in Game One of the series. And look, we we said ninety five percent. If that's the case, then it is ninety five percent his last start as a Toronto Blue Jay. This year has been miserable. For Blue Jay fans, it has probably been miserable for the players. It's been miserable. Look, let's be honest. It's probably been miserable for management, too, because they have probably heard nothing but negativity from everywhere. Yep. What you need to do tomorrow, it, I, God, I hope Kikuchi gives him a good start. Because if he can give him a good start, John Schneider doing his due diligence, pull him mid-inning and give him that standing ovation the kid deserves. That guy came over here, and that first year was something else. Yeah, and then, we were having conversations on should they just like you know bite the bullet and just yeah. eat the contract? Absolutely, but he's been and, outstanding the last two years. Yeah, last year was great. I mean, he's going to have spurts of, of bad stuff. I mean, remember we talked on the pod a couple times where it's like, great, right at the trade deadline, he's tanking his value, but he's good recently. His last couple, I believe, have been pretty been better. Or let me his last one. But, but better until better until the third time through. Which was his big fair enough. But that's what he is, though, right? Yeah. And 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 I've smart been staff, smart teams will know that and they will see that. So we need to get him through, like let's say five innings, and maybe get him one out in the sixth inning. Or God, I mean, if he can do that, I don't know. It seems to be a tricky thing to do. But get that one out, yank him, let him get the ovation, give the fans something to cheer about, because for God's sakes, this team has not been fun to cheer for. And give Kikuchi the sign off that he deserves. Uh, he's been a, he's been a soldier for this team, and he's been great. Absolutely. And uh, we're, we're going to do the UC Kiku, Kikuchi, uh, you know, farewell tour when he actually gets traded, or heck, even Sunday. I mean, it might even happen before then. So we'll see how that goes. But absolutely, I concur with everything you just said. Uh, just an awesome to see UC Kikuchi completely change the tone on what was an awful first year and be last season an integral part of the Blue Jays rotation and made the playoffs. That was a very good rotation. And this season. Uh, being a legitimate trade value, having a, being a trade ship that has value. So absolutely give UC Kikuchi a round of applause. Uh, basically, my, my preview for the Rangers series, a good start for you, say a few more Vlad bombs and the results I can live with, regardless of what happens. So I got a little something that I wanted to fire out there, and I was listening I, I, again. Jay's, I got to head out pretty quick, though. Okay, yeah, Jay's Talk Plus real quick. Um, so 
they were, Blake Murphy was talking about all these sellers and the, the lack of sellers out there right now. And the Texas Rangers, obviously, on that kind of on that tier of, you know, do they sell? Do they not? Well, they've beaten the crap out of the White Sox. It's not saying much, but they've won like four or five in a row. They're nearing that 500. They're only like three games out of the division lead. They're right there. If the Blue Jays can maybe do us all a favor and get their teeth kicked in in this three-game set, that's one less seller to worry about. That means you have the guys to value. I don't know. It'll get it a little different. So that's kind of my last uh, thought going into this series. Is It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Why not? Some like little... 3D chess going on here. I like it. I don't mind it. Let's do it. We'll Let's see. Lose. Although losing to the Rangers, though, yeah, uh, that's still, yeah. It's it's yeah. Still, yeah, it's still not fun. And I will never cheer for the team to lose. I never will. Nope. But if they lose, I won't, won't be the end of the world. We've kind of learned that by about two months into this season. Rob, you got to go. We all got to go. But if, for everybody watching and listening, we appreciate you as always. And like I mentioned earlier, hit the subscribe button, like it on YouTube, do what you got to do, rate it everywhere else, do all that great stuff. For myself, James Price, and Robin Tillamon, we appreciate you listening and watching as always. And uh, <laughs> go Jays. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Blue Jays Center on YouTube, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.